Hello everyone and welcome back to Java, this is the best Mac tutorials and we are today taking a little bit of an aside from our uh, GUI applications and instead focusing on a user question which was how to compile a program into a jar file and uh, the reason I'm actually making a separate tutorial out of this is because uh, I don't think that it's very straightforward to make uh, and to compile an application into a jar if it uses a command line. If it uses a GUI it's very very simple very straightforward, but if it only uses a command line uh, or uses a command line on any part of it that you don't um, do odd workarounds within the program, uh, this is the tutorial for you. This is how to get your program that uses the command line to work with a double click on a jar file. This is a Windows only example, however Linux and Mac are extremely similar, and I mean literally probably changing two, three lines of code. Um, but this is the uh, Windows example. If you want to do this for Linux, I recommend you pursue this further. Um, and in the coming weeks, I'll probably, uh, on my open source website, update my port scanning application to work with a double click on Linux as well. And so anyway, but real quick, just showing you, um, if I have a console application, say I make a new class, public s static void main string args. And the reason we're using BlueJ is because BlueJ is honestly the easiest IDE I've ever found that uh, for exporting jar files. And so my program is going to do um, system.out.println hello world worlds. Yay! Um, plural, I'm so creative. Uh, so just like this, if I ran the main method, it would say hello worlds and then the program would terminate. Now at this point, it, everything seems great, and I'm like, man, I just wrote the coolest program. And in fact, say I did some cool, fancy stuff. Say I did, uh, you know, I'm going to import java. It, my spelling is horrible today. Import java.util.wildcard, and I'm going to make a scanner object. If you don't know what any of this stuff is, it's all covered in previous tutorials, so just go back and uh, start from one or wherever you think your skill level's at and just kind of. Uh, build up. They're kind of out of order in the fact that it's not in the order that Java books generally go in. I think this is a uh, order more conducive to learning plus a couple little random asides when I think of something really good to add in like this for example. And so anyway, scanner object and we'll do um, enter an, a, an integer between 1 and 10. Eh, it doesn't need to be too exciting, you don't need an exclamation mark. And then we do int i equals int next int. And um, we could do, actually, we could put this in a, or we could, eh, we don't even bother with a while loop. This is just an example that doesn't really have anything to do with this code itself. And uh, if i dot equals, um, let's create a random object. Random, random equals new random. So redundant. <laughs> if i dot equals, uh, or if i equals not the dot equals random dot next int ten plus one and uh, the reason we do plus one again in case anyone forgot is because uh, normally this would give me between zero and nine so I have to add one to shift that zero shifts to one and nine shifts to ten so the whole thing shifts over to instead of starting at a uh, base of zero it starts at a base of one so it counts up base is a bad word to use for that but basically it starts at the beginning counting number of one and goes up to 10 instead of 0 to 9. Because remember, computer systems uh, almost always start at 0, whether it's indices of arrays or, you know, array list objects or, um, you know, <laughs> the default initialization number for an int even is 0. And for a double, I think it's 0, 0.0. So a lot of use of 0 in programming, which I've covered earlier. And so then we'll do system out.println u1 uh, else. You, oops, what am I doing? Printlin, you lost. I don't need a smiley face, sad face. Alright, so very, very simple program again. And if we run this real quick. Hello, worlds, enter an integer between 1 and 10, 7. Oh, I lost. Alright, what a bummer. But, um, so that's the basic functionality of the program. And in BlueJ, instead of dealing with ant builds and ant scripts and all that, all you do for a jar file is project, create jar file, and choose the main class and click continue. So, personally I prefer, um, just a second, personally I prefer uh, Eclipse to BlueJ for basically all 
reaches a development, except when I'm exporting to jars and I'm doing a lot of changes really quickly, I prefer to just work in BlueJ temporarily and then copy and paste the files back into Eclipse once I'm done doing my quick little changes for jar files and stuff. Uh, because honestly, it's a lot easier to export to jar files in BlueJ for someone who's um, not very advanced in Java, and even if you are advanced in Java, it's a lot faster to do it with BlueJ if you're doing uh, builds with, you know, 10, 20 builds in one actual release build, you're going to be doing a lot of jar files, and maybe even you're in the hundreds, and so BlueJ is a much, much quicker path to go for the actual uh, creating of jar files. Now, in Eclipse, it's it's not impossible for sure, and it's actually fairly easy once you get the hang of it, but BlueJ is just a lot more easy and straightforward, but less feature-filled. So, I'm just going to call it test1.jar. And that is right here. So test1.jar, I double click and I'm like, why isn't it running? I had this cool program. Shouldn't it just open up a console and work? Well, the thing is, uh, the Java environment, Java C, um, Java compiler, uh, Java X, basically, it doesn't see that jar files need input and output from the command line and give it a command line. It just assumes that command line stuff is more for testing or whatever, or that if you're using a command line, users are going to be using it with this. If I open a command line and I do Java jar, that, all that's telling it is, hey Java, I got a jar file for you. And then I drag in the jar file or type the full path or whatever, or CD to the path and type it. All of a sudden it works, and it enters between 1 and 10, 7. And I lost again, so whatever. But uh, I should have made it 1 and 3, that way I could have won at least once in this whole testing round. Anyway, but um, so when you launch it through a command line, everything works great. And, you know, I could do it again, Java, jar. Ooh, yay, it works, you know, 7. I'm just going to keep guessing 7 until it works. But basically, um, the idea is that this has a terminal, so uh, the input and output is redirected to the terminal or command line or command prompt or whatever you want to call it, uh, that it was launched in. In this case, it's the command prompt on Windows. So what we do is we tell it to give itself its own command prompt by having it create a batch file and launching the bat file and having the bat file launch itself with a command line, which is kind of an odd workaround, and it doesn't work for jar files with a space in the directory they're in. Um, so, for example, if I put in, well, I'll show you later once we actually get it working, but uh, you can have some issues with there being spaces in names. So, just one thing to keep in mind. But basically, um, I'm going to show you the real simple, uh, this is a download you'll find in the description, and it's basically a .txt file, and it has code inside of it. So I'm just going to paste that code in, or what am I doing after it? So it has two imports that you need to import, and then this class, you can copy, and, or, sorry, not class, method, and this method is called launch. If you have another method called launch, you can just rename this method to, you know, launch program or whatever isn't being used at the moment. Uh, name doesn't really matter, it just describes what it does. It's heavily commented, unlike most of my code, uh, so that someone trying to use it, it would actually make sense to them. So, just explaining real quick what the code does. Uh, console, console equals system.console, it's getting a system console object, uh, and if it is not equal to null, that means that it has output through a command line, terminal, command prompt, whatever, and so it'll delete the batch file if it exists. Now this will make a little bit more sense once we talk about this else if statement. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> let me save that real quick. Um, but here, this else if says if the graphics environment is not or is headless, if that's not true, then it is headless, so it means it doesn't have a command prompt, so we gotta give it one. So, the os equals system.get property os.name.toLowercase. This makes sure that this only happens on Windows. On Linux, it doesn't try to make a batch file and fail at running it. Um, so this is a Windows-only example. See, Indos. Uh, the reason I left out the W is because of, with capitalization, I didn't want to do two lowercase, and no Linux system is going to have Indos in its name, so you're perfectly safe. Or Mac OS X, any Unix-based, any, anything, really. CentOS, you know. But um, basically, <clears throat> this, uh, if you were to extend this for Linux, you do have OS.contains, probably INUX, uh, that way you'd eliminate things that are just purely Unix in case you wanted to do something Linux-specific, although shell scripts, but anyway... Um, and so, and then you would do, this would be very similar, except instead of a batch file, you'd be doing a shell script, and uh, this command C start would change a little bit. But basically, it's very, very similar logic. And so, if the OS is Windows, then it creates a new file, 
and that file's basically pointer, it points at this very lengthy way of saying myself. Um, main.class.getProtectionDomain.getSourceCode.getLocation.2URI All that's doing right there is getting the absolute path of the draw file through directories, through whatever, really. And so, um, that's just getting... It, well, you have to change... One thing to notice is some of these comments are things that you should do. So you have to change main to the name of your main class. In this case, it's very obviously main class. Uh, then, or not very obviously, but very conspicuously. And then print writer out, we create a print writer to a launch.bat file. If you want to change the name of launch.bat to something else, feel free to do it. Just make sure you change it. If you change it here, and here, and here if you change it. So, uh, it prints out echo off, and then it prints out the title of the program. You want to change this to whatever, you know, my awesome program bat box, or whatever. And then um, Java space hyphen jar space, and then draw file to get path. Something interesting to note here is that if you wanted to do special command line arguments, such as giving it more memory, you know, xms 2g space hyphen xmx 3g, uh, you'd get between 2 and 3 gigabytes of RAM for your program. And so if you want your program to launch itself with more RAM, this is a very good thing to consider doing. And... Um, in fact, if you're trying to launch with more RAM, you probably want to do this regardless of whether the graphics environment is headless or not. You want to have it launch itself with more RAM. So just something to keep in mind. But you can have other arguments. You put them inside of the string literal, more than likely. And then we do out.close. So we close our print writer object, and we write launch out back to the hard drive instead of being just suspended in like this limbo state in memory. And then we have... Um, this is oddly amusing. <laughs> Sorry, and then we get a runtime object, which is um, y which we're going to use for actually running the dot batch file, and then cmd space backslash c space start space launch dot bat. Ugh, I can't talk today, and that's going to start up your launch dot bat batch file uh, with a command prompt. So, and then it's system dot exit zero zero is the universally accepted way of saying everything went fine. When really, truly, everything didn't work fine, because it did have a GUI, everything is now, or command line, sorry, a GUI window holding a command line. Now all is fine, so it's not something to be concerned about, so I still return zero. If you wanted to put negative one there, and then track that in the program, uh, for meaning that, you know, it exited bad because the user double-clicked it, you could do that, but there's really not much of a point. Um, and then, so that batch file is created. Then, if it's launched with a console, if console is not equal to null, so if console is equal to something, there's some console there, some console object it's interacting with, then um, you're going to want to delete your batch file. And the reason is because, uh, the reason I, I don't just do f.delete, the reason I do if f.exist, because oftentimes if someone launched it from the command line, it would be like, oh, well, there's no batch file because I have a command line, but I never had to make a batch file to give it to me, so I never wrote the batch file. So that's why we do, if it exists, we delete it. Otherwise, we don't care. If it doesn't exist, no one cares about it, unless you're one of the imaginary number people. In which case, imaginary numbers are fun, but imaginary files aren't too useful. So, you delete your batch file, and I've been talking for like 13 minutes and not really showed you much of all, much at all of working. So let me do that real quick. Let me just save and compile. Actually, I'm nearing on 14 minutes. Go over to BlueJ, project, create jar file, and continue. Test1.jar, let's do test2.jar. And test2.jar, launch it. And hmm, still nothing works. I added the method, right? You said to add the method. Well, the thing is, you have to call it in your main method. So, I'll have to call launch right up here. You'll generally want to call it as the first line of code in your program because you don't want the rest of your program running if it doesn't have a command line. You instead want it to uh, be ended and for it to start a new instance of itself, essentially uh, simplified a new instance of itself that has a command line for output. So now let's try it. Compile, go over to BlueJ, and create jar file, main class, and create. I'll just overwrite test2.jar and run it. Boom! Command line pops up. Alright, integer, 7. I lost. And then it says the batch file cannot be found. That is one minor, minor drawback of using this method. It does say, once your program terminates, the batch file cannot be found, and then brings them to a command prompt. So what you can do is, somewhere in here, if you wanted to, you could do uh, out.println 
title um, the title in here uh, or, sorry you could put like um you know if you wanted later on in the batch file you could echo like uh, you know echo you can close this window or something as the program is closing uh, you can't really have Java itself close the window because Java is a level below the window so Java can't tell it hey master die you know it can't do that so uh, Java is running under the command line the command prompt whatever you want to call it terminal blah blah, blah. I've been using Linux a lot today but um essentially you can't have Java terminate that window action it could have something in the batch file that terminates the window action and then the batch file could delete itself but that's pretty difficult so instead uh, there's just the minor user inconvenience of having to close the window which really isn't that big of a deal and I'm sure most people can figure that out so um, let me just do this test2.jar here real quick I don't know if I made any changes I'm just gonna redo it uh, integer between I just wanna win you know that's what I wanna do but anyway, so all's great and dandy, but what if I launch it from the command line? Wouldn't it spawn a new command line, right? java.jar and drag in my test2.jar. And honestly, if you saw the first version of my ports program on my theopeneffect.com website, uh, by the way, if you don't know what that is, it's just an open source website I started for all the little dabbling Java projects I do. I just throw them up there if they're open source. But anyway... And there's not much. There's a port scanning application that's written in Java for TCP scanning and firewall management on Windows and fun stuff. I enjoyed making it, but, you know, anyway. However, what was I going to say? I had something important. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, if you saw the first version of that, which I don't know if you did, uh, if you launched it from the command line, it would spawn a new command line because either way it was creating that batch file. Now, this way, if I do this, you'll notice everything works right in this command line. Oh, come on, I can't even, yeah. Um, I'm going to rig this. Just a second. Um, and two, next in, two. All right, because I want to win. Um, but basically, in here when you, oh, save, save. All right, in here when you do uh, graphics environment is headless, this uh, if else if is what uh, solidifies Java knowing whether it's working with. Oh come on! If I lose, I'm... dang it! Just a second, I want to win this. Uh... Yay! I won. Um, but basically, if uh, this else if this if and else if is what. Uh, basically is thinking, do I have a GUI, do I have a command line interface? If I do, then let's do this, this is really cool. If I don't, then all right, let's give ourselves one. So, uh, as you'll notice, if never terminates the program. Uh, so if, basically, if the graphics environment is headless, then you don't have a console, you don't have console output, so you end up exiting. Whereas if you do have a console, you don't end up exiting here. So instead of just exiting during the launch call, it actually escapes from the launch call and then continues through the rest of, through the, rest of the code. So pretty useful. That is how to make a jar file in Linux or in Windows for Windows in BlueJay. Um, like I said, Eclipse is very similar, but there's more steps to it. It's longer, and for when we're doing a lot of builds real quick and uh, for jars, or if you're a beginner it's a lot easier just to use BlueJay. If you're just going to be doing like one export to a jar and you know your way around Java and everything, by all means, keep it in Eclipse. But if you're going to be doing a lot of jar file compiling, you might want to consider doing BlueJay because it makes the process pretty snappy. Uh, but anyway, one quick thing to mention real quick, that was not redundant at all, is that if your program has just a GUI, you're not using a command line or anything, or if you are, it's only for debugging and the user doesn't have to see it, no user input basically, no scanner objects, no print lens that the user needs to see, then all you have to do in BlueJ is project, create jar file, continue, create. Maybe a little bit of browsing as to where you want to put it. But that's all you need to do for a GUI. You don't need to do any of this fancy pasting in stuff. You don't need to do any of that crap. All you have to do is real simple export to jar file, because Java does give itself GUIs and JFrames and JOption panes and all that stuff is all included in that. However, it's just the command line that it doesn't get. Uh, so, oddly enough, writing console applications is actually harder if you're uh, exporting to the common public in that way. So anyway, 
The download link to this is in the description below, and thank you for joining me.